Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bree and I teach fifth grade in Southern California. I'm just now going into my third year of teaching. I talk a lot about education, lifestyle, beauty, fashion, and if that sounds fun to you, just go ahead and hit subscribe. So in today's video, I just wanted to discuss the top 14 things that I wish someone would have told me before I started teaching. Now, last night I just sat down and I really thought, what did I not know before going into teaching? And I wanted to make a very short uh, list and let's just jump into it. You know, going into your first year of teaching, there's so many things that you don't know and I didn't know. I want to pass on the favor of telling you guys what you should know so you don't have to feel so stressed and upset like I did. Number one, it's okay to feel excited and afraid leading up to your first day of teaching. It's okay going into your first day of teaching and feeling so scared, so excited, so nervous. It is so normal to feel all those sorts of emotions. Number two, it's okay if you cry on your first day. I cried on my first day. I cried hard on my first day and I was emotionally drained. I really had no one to confide in when this happened. Um, I talked to like my team at the time and it was like, they made it sound like it wasn't normal. It is, I, I have cried. I've known many people who have cried and it's okay, it's really overwhelming. It's a bunch of emotions, like I said in the last point. It's a bunch of emotions. All right, number three. It's okay if you feel a lot of pressure, responsibility, and guilt on your first day of school. It's because you care, and that's what makes you a great teacher. On my first day of school, actually on back to school night, it was the night before the first day of school, it was meet the teacher night, I saw all my kids, all my parents, and I was on an emergency permit. Uh, I was on an intern credential, so I wasn't even done with my credentialing school. I remember seeing all the kids, I remember seeing all the parents, and I felt a sense of guilt because I didn't feel like I was a good enough teacher to teach these kids. I felt like it's me. I need to teach my third graders everything they need to know in third grade, and I just felt so guilty that I couldn't do that for them. And if you feel like that, it's normal. <laughs> I felt it and it's just showing that you care and that's all you really can ask for is just to care enough to care all right number four for the first two weeks teach nothing except community building and social emotional skills such as learning to accept an apology learning how to apologize um, respect how do we treat each other and just having a lot of those conversations while teaching routines and procedures. My Both of my years of teaching, I went way too fast and I thought the kids knew how to act in a classroom and I assumed my kids knew how to do all these things, but assume nothing and teach everything. Teach how to raise your hands. And I would recommend for two weeks and that will set the tone for the rest of the school year. Number five, take your time with each lesson. Keep it simple. I do, we do, you do. Um, when I first started teaching, I tried to cram so much into one lesson. I remember I was in third grade, I was teaching, we were doing race comprehension questions, reading a little summary, answering race questions. Literally, that was probably a three day lesson and I tried to do it in an hour, 45 minutes. And I learned, okay, chunk and chew. So chunk and chew what do i want them to learn how am i going to teach it to them using i do we do you do whatever else you want to do but keep it simple it's okay on your first day weeks months of school even to a new grade level ever it's okay to feel like you don't want to be the mean teacher um, when I first started teaching, I was just like, oh, I don't want to be the mean teacher, so I'm just going to be all the time. Well, that doesn't really work. So just know, just because you discipline or you do something a certain way, it doesn't make you the mean teacher. And it's okay like to fear that. I fear that. I still feel that. Fear that a little bit. I, I don't want to be mean. But at the same time, it's like, is it really mean though? If I 
ask you to sit down. Is that really mean? No. Number seven, respect your students as people and they will respect you and love you. So what I mean by that is even though they're 10 years old, my fifth graders are 10 years old, they're still people and I will still respect them as people even though there's like a 20 year age difference between us, I will still respect them as people. So that means my students have emotions, my students have feelings and they have thoughts and I need to respect that. Number eight, don't be afraid to discipline. They will still love you. So again, Discipline in the beginning was so, so, so hard. But do not be afraid to discipline. I was, even with my fifth graders. <laughs> and I suffered the consequences. Just come out strong. You know, these are the non-negotiables. If you break them because you made the choice yourself, there has to be a consequence. No hard feelings, but you did the action, so. Nine, lesson planning takes a lot of work and time however it does get better the more you do it my first i remember spending three hours on a sunday night lesson planning because i had to turn my lesson plans in and i was like no wonder teaching is a seven day a week job like no wonder i'm it's shocking how long lesson planning takes However, if you chunk and chew, really think about what do I want to teach them? How am I going to do it? You know, keeping it simple, it gets faster, faster, faster. And then later on, when you're like, okay, I got this, you can add some zest into it. Just a little bit more zest, you know, like the stuff you see on Pinterest, stuff you see on Instagram. All right, number 10. Let me put my drink down for this. You need to set boundaries for yourself. And what I mean by that is with yourself, with your work hours, with others around you. I'm actually filming, I have filmed another video about this. I will link it down below, but you need to set strong boundaries. So that means I'm only gonna come to work at eight and I'm gonna leave at four every single day. Those are my working hours. That is what I'm getting paid to do. And that is my boundary. Also, if you come home and you didn't have the best day, Set that boundary with whomever you live with and say, I don't really want to talk about work. Set a boundary of no talking about work at home. Setting boundaries also goes into my next point. Point number 11, mindset is key. I will tell you my second year of teaching, I did have a rough group. I was in fifth grade. I didn't set strong procedures. I didn't have the strongest class community. I had a very negative and poor mindset coming into work every day. And the kids can read that. My kids read it like a book. When I was in a good mood, everyone was in a good mood. Imagine that. When I was calm, everyone was calm. Imagine that. So you need to check yourself. I need to check myself. This is really for me too, but you need to check yourself coming into work every day. How's my mindset? Just really getting in your zen and getting into your vibe of how you want your day to go. It's not easy. I'm still working on it. Number 12, apologize to students when apology is due. Just because you're an adult does not mean you get a special pass not to apologize to students. I apologized all the time. I'm wrong too. I'm also wrong. I may have blamed you for something and it wasn't your fault and now I'm realizing it. I'm apologizing. Apologize. Make po apologizing a norm in your classroom. And also show your students that you have emotions as well. I believe that will create a sense of empathy um, in your classroom and students will learn to be empathetic because empathy is a skill that is taught. Like when you're not having the best day, say, hey class, I'm not having the best day today. I need some grace because this is what happened, this is what happened. Um, and I've done that and it works and it's really nice. For 13, self-care, is the most important thing that you need to know. 13, self-care is your most important thing you need to know about and how to do. You cannot teach from an empty bucket. If you are feeling empty and upset, depressed, anxious, not fulfilled, you will not have a good teaching life. I've been there, I was there. <laughs> I've been there for the past two years. You need to find your self-care routine and you need to know what fills your bucket so you can fill your students' buckets. And number 14, the last thing. 
I, this just came to my mind, but it's okay if you sit down. It's okay if you need to sit at your desk for a little bit and get some stuff done at your desk while the students are working. It is a-okay. It is okay if you are sitting down, getting something done, calling a parent, doing whatever at your desk, and admin walks in. I have found myself so many times like just feeling like I'm doing something wrong because I'm sitting down, but no, my feet are tired. I've been up all day. I need to take care of some paperwork on my desk. I need a grade. I need to do stuff at my desk as well. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong because you do, because you sit at your desk. <laughs> I've always felt like that, but honestly, like part of my self care is like, I need to sit for a little bit, decompress at my desk while the students are working, and I need to get some stuff done at my desk as well. All right, you guys, so that was my 14 really quick points that I wish someone would have told me going into the teaching career. I know there's so many more, but I really just sat down last night and wrote them down. And I really hope this video helps you. Um, thank you guys so much. And I will catch you in my next video. If you have not followed me on Instagram, be sure to follow me down below. And thank you so much and have an awesome day. And by the way, teaching is an awesome job and I love teaching. Did I say that? Probably not. All right, bye.